Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and today I'm taking a look at another mod from my Doom Mod stockpile. This is Total Chaos by Wadaholic, which has been in my collection since, well, around the time that I first got into Doom Modding, which is when Ashes 2063 came out. And this was the first one I came across where I was like, wow, that's still in the Doom engine? Because it is the first one I saw that uses 3D models for everything. I think this mod is fairly well known, you know, it's pretty well regarded, and it sounds like one of the big content creator type people did a video on it recently because a bunch of the Doom modders that I follow on Twitter were talking about that video, so people are probably looking into Total Chaos right now, and I thought that's probably a good time for me to look into Total Chaos as well. So this is kind of a survival horror, very Silent Hill looking sort of game, where we need to manage all sorts of resources, we have a limited inventory, and there are hellish monsters in this sort of rotted industrial environment. But let's get in here and let the game explain itself. Also quite a bit more story than your average Doom mod, from what I understand. And it's also worth mentioning that the creator is currently working on making a standalone you know, remake of this in Unreal Engine 5, so I assume we will be seeing more Total Chaos in the future. I could handle it. I had already gone through much worse. At the end of the day, I still had me. And I knew who I was. That emphasis there makes it seem like he did not actually know who he was. April of 1972 was when it all began. I was working as a coast guard and I received a distress call from a damaged offshore boat. After packing my belongings, I left to attempt a rescue. A great storm approached, my boat became damaged and stranded at sea. I lay on the deck of my boat waiting for rescue, but nobody came. Who rescues the Coast Guard? When I woke, I had arrived on an island, tall concrete structures as far as the eye can see. I'd been here before, Fort Oasis. A mining community once resided here. However, the place appears to be completely abandoned. Something terrible has happened here. My boat was heavily damaged by the storm. After a day, I had managed to repair most of the damage. However, it seems someone is attempting to contact me. My radio has been receiving strange signals. Whoever it is, they want to be found. Chapter 1, Arrival. Apparently this game only has six levels, but I think they are pretty significantly long, so it's not a short mod. Alright, so this has to be our, what, our Coast Guard patrol boat? Which apparently we manned by ourselves. It's a weird bit of momentum to the movement where if I let go, you can see it kind of takes a second to stop. Alright, so we do have an inventory. It looks like a grid inventory. And we can combine items down here. We have an armor slot. So, you can see there's quite a bit going on here right off the bat. And we have health and stamina, but we also have radiation, hunger, and bleeding. Okay. So I can't actually go back and look at my boat. But here we are on Fort Oasis, which is a uh, grubby-ass decaying island. I guess kind of reminiscent to the the island in Resident Evil Revelations 2. Which, if I remember correctly, was also like a mining colony. A Russian penal mining colony that was left to rot. So yeah, you can see that basically everything is 3D. I mean, this fence, I think this fence is a sprite, but for the most part, all the weapons and enemies and environments are 3D. 
And I think this actually ran kind of poorly originally from what just like reading comments and stuff from back in the day. But this is the director's cut and it sounds like they fixed a lot of the performance issues in this director's cut. While also adding more content. Alright, well this is all in French. I don't know if that tells us anything. There is no other way. Why is it kind of glowing? That makes it seem like there's, I don't know, something hidden here. Like this is not a real wall. Well, there's two ways to go, despite the graffiti. Okay, that's a real keypad, so we actually do need a number. Alright. So for the moment, there is indeed no other way. I don't think we have a flashlight or anything to begin with. Is that cloth physics I see in GZ Doom? Never would have expected that. I mean, this is not the only mod that uses a lot of 3D at this point, but I think it was, at the time it released, the most extensive usage of 3D in a GZ Doom mod. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know there are some experienced Doomers in my uh, viewership who will know better about this stuff. So I defer to your judgment, or your knowledge. Needs a key. I mean, this is very much the kind of style of, like, abandoned place that I love to see in games. Where everything's kind of overgrown, you know, nature has sort of started to take over. But there's still plenty of urban decay underneath it. Locked. Not locked. And we don't have a map. There's no auto map or anything like that. So I'm gonna have to actually figure out where I'm going. Now that looks like a key, or a, a spatula. Probably could be used as both. And a note. They're gone. They are all gone. My paradise, something has taken it over. The isolation, it is killing me. Letter number one of one. Uh, E, there we go. While exploring Fort Oasis, you will come across journal entries written by those who used to live here, plus the journal toggle key, J, to read these entries. Okay. So we do have a journal, but we don't have any, like, journal entries of our own. That's just for storing notes. I wasn't sure. Alright, well, let's go use that key, I guess. And similar to Solace Dreams, it seems like we have, kind of, gated off areas. You know, the, the doors don't actually open, they teleport you to a new area. Which makes sense for survival horror. Because, you know, it's kind of hard to run away from enemies instead of fighting them if they can just follow you indefinitely. In your inventory, you can use and manage items you have found in the world of Fort Oasis, medical kits to heal, manages to stop bleeding out. Many items can be used to manage your status. Double click to use, I inventory. I mean, it's also the most extensive tutorial pop-ups I've seen for a mod. You usually have to dig through the controls to figure that stuff out. That are morphine. Stim pack. Causes several adverse side effects. Packaging has a lot of warnings on it. Use with caution. Causes bleeding, increases hunger. Clearly a bit of stalker inspiration in that stuff too, then. Are those corpses? They kind of look like hollow husks. Maybe those are corpses of the enemies? He doesn't say anything about them, though. He's not like, what the hell is that? So is our initial goal just to follow the static? Until we actually get in contact with whoever that is? I think I can make that jump. We have a pretty weak jump. We can go that way, but I think I saw a weapon over here. Combat. Weapons can be found scattered on the ground on Fort Oasis. 
It sounds like there's actually quite a few weapons, but I'm guessing with the inventory, we won't be able to carry all of them. Primary attack swings the weapon and can be used in a three-hit combo. Each hit in a 3x combo will do more damage on successive hits. Secondary attack charges the attack at the cost of stamina. The more stamina used, the more damage inflicted. Alright, so we got a pickaxe. A little, like, one-handed pickaxe. So it's got damage stats and everything. Does not deal a lot of damage, but can do a heavy attack. Very durable. Heavy attack charges up very quickly. Okay, so it will break, but we can also repair it with materials. And we found some rotten apples. Provides a stamina boost, lowers hunger. I mean, you know, you can more or less eat an old moldy apple without getting too sick. I kind of wish it would tell you what you're looking at when you looked at it, though. You know, like a little crosshair name popping up. What's that humming? Locked. I wonder if we will actually find a map, or if I just have to remember the map layout. So, oh, I wonder why this stuff on the walls does this, like, bloom effect when you get close. That makes it seem like it's not actually there, like you're just imagining it, but maybe that will do something later? Okay, it doesn't, like, need it to break up a wall. Good to know that we should break open any boxes we find. Not those ones, though. Hello? What about this one? Nope. There's something a little weird with the FOV. I feel like it's uh, a little too high. It kind of looks like it's going a little fish IE sometimes. Uh, where can I change that? A vignette, lens flare, motion blur, noise. I think I turned down the vignette from the default settings because it was a little intense before. Do we really need camera bobbing and swaying? Let me turn down the field of view. I'm going to put it to like 100. And maybe turn down the swaying a little bit? Yeah, that seems a little better. Also, weirdly, despite this being kind of a survival horror game, we can do, like, a, a dodge dash, <laughs> which is pretty, pretty far. Keep an eye on your status to stay alive. Stamina is your ability to dodge and use weapons. Radiation inflicts damage caused by radiation. Find food to prevent starvation. This has an effect on stamina and bleed. There's a phone ringing somewhere. Uh, hello? I'm gonna say we probably don't... Can I... Okay, can I hide my st status? Is there a key for that? Journal, inventory, quick swap. Stats display is Q. There we go. Yeah, it's good so you can, like, quickly check it, but not have it covering your screen all the time. Okay, there was an enemy there for a second. They're teasing us with whatever's lurking around here before we actually encounter it. Well, the pickaxe exploded. Salami. Can be combined with mobile gas cooker to cook it. Rotten meat, rotten bread, vodka. I don't think I can attack without a weapon. Also, I can't go back here? I wanted to break this crate, but apparently I missed. This phone is behind here. So I actually have to go around this way. Hmm. Not entirely sure I can get over there. From this side, at least. It looked like I just need to go back and around, but yeah. I guess we'll have to go the long way around to get out there. Well, I 
suppose it's gonna suck if we get in combat and I have no weapon. Because <laughs> I broke it on crates and walls. Oh. Okay, I heard a clank right as I hit E, so I thought this was like a hidden door. Who was keeping buckets up there? Hopeless. That doesn't even need a key. <laughs> there was a gun right there, that white shape. And unfair. What does the top word say? Why me? Okay. Thought there was four letters there, but there's only three. Now I am a little lost. This is where we came from. This is also where we came from. Okay, we need a key to pull that. We also need a key to pull that. We got an auto save. T, how many times do I have to tell you about door 237? Because of your stupidity, when we tried to open the security gate, the entire block's grid went offline. Again. Until you get the wiring fixed, we have to disable all couplings to open the door. You can't even do your job right. If this incompetence continues, you will not be asked to leave. Oh, you will be asked to leave. I will not hand out another warning about this. I'm so used to being able to just hit escape to close all menus. In, like, every game. Alright, so now we can open this. Five remaining. Something is following me. I can hear scuffling. Locked. There's definitely a creature afoot. Throw a bottle at me. <laughs> Sounds like it's right behind this wall. Hey there, fella. I'm a little lost. Could you maybe, uh, maybe help me out? Trying to find these switches. He's not very talkative. Good thing we pulled that one before he caught up, though. So we just need to avoid this guy and pull these switches. I think 237 was the... Yeah, this one over here. Okay. I think I dodged a little too early. So there's one back there, but there should also be one over here. Kinda need him to follow me close enough that I can get over there and pull the switch. Got that one. Got that one. Oh, this is a dead end. Gonna be a tight squeeze to get past him in here. Unless I can jump on this table. No, I can't. Maybe he's not allowed in here. Oh, no, never mind. I was going to say, because he might trap you in here, but... Yeah, I just got to get past him. Okay, this should be enough space. Now, if only I could lock him in. Man, you run really fast after dashing for a couple seconds. But I can't just dash around everywhere because it wastes your stamina. One remaining. Can't go back. I don't know where the last one would be. I feel like we already looked over here. Yeah, that one's pulled. Maybe there's one in the middle? The door's still locked. 
Got that one. That leads back to the room. Yeah, there's gotta be one, like, here. In this cross-section area. That wall, that wall. There it is. Oh. <laughs> I thought he was in a different hallway. Goodbye, sir. No thanks for the help. So yeah, I guess we could have just killed that guy if we still had the pickaxe. It didn't take too much damage. Only got hit once. And our hunger is still pretty low. Okay, it sounds like he's still following me. Ooh. Now intensely dark. I'm like trying to look for items as I'm running away. That's pretty good, though, that you can just see their eyes. Uh... Switch, switch. Glare. Okay. Door closed on its own. I was like... in this place means you are willing to do what I ask of you. If you follow my requests, then I will take you to what it is you desire. Picked up common rags. Is that our tier one armor? Common rags worn by the locals of Fort Oasis provides 20% damage protection better than nothing. Because apparently we're not wearing anything right now. So, for some reason, all of the rotten food also causes radiation damage. Oh, it actually tells you on the meters. That's handy. It tells you exactly how much it fills up. Or it takes away. Well, I don't think we need to eat anything yet. Bandages are only for... Bleeding. Causes bleeding increases hunger. Okay. Well, let's continue. <clears throat> Hopefully we'll find a new weapon. One that is more durable than, like, five hits. And we made it outside. Or back outside. What a glum place. Here before, during better times. Madness has intruded these walls. Only we can put a stop to it. On the north side of the island, a mine that awaits us. Down there, at the deepest point, is where we need to go. Sure. Nothing is safer than descending into the depths of an abandoned mine full of, no doubt, monsters. So it looks like we have two ways to go. Can't go down there, but there is also a tunnel over here. I bet it needs a key we don't have. Underhaul's key required, and there is scissors? I need scissors. 61. But I actually don't need scissors right now. I don't have a use for them. I bet these boxes all have stuff in them. But, like, you can't even punch. 
So yeah, I'm not really sure what it is with this, like, weird bloom effect you get on walls. I think you can probably turn that down. Like, there is a, a post-processing tab here. Where you can turn down lens flares. Maybe turn this down a bit. Yeah, see, now it's not doing it. And I think that is just because there is a light on the wall. It's supposed to be kind of reflecting, but it's a little too intense. So, is this the mine we've entered? None of these lockers open. John Thomas, MD. Prescription for Prozac, 20 milligrams. Tablets. Treatment for panic attacks. Take one tablet per day. Hmm, I wonder if this is actually our main character's prescription. Perhaps there is uh, something a little questionable about their mental health. If this is indeed Silent Hill inspired. And I've also heard there's a little bit of a, a Shutter Island in here, which I feel like just mentioning that might be a little bit of a spoiler, but without context, I'm going to say it's not. You know, I could have used one of these flares when I was running away from those guys. Energy drink, a rare commodity on Ford Oasis, mostly used as a pick-me-up by miners. The brand is hard to make out, but the can has a bluish tint to it. Maybe it's Stalker brand energy drink. You know, despite how, like, ratty these walls look, they're still very shiny <laughs> underneath all that. Hmm. Do I want to go in here? Oh, God. I've made a terrible mistake. Yeah, I feel like that's maybe a don't fucking go in there unless you have a flashlight, idiot. But then again, I said that in Solace Dreams and turned out there was no flashlight in that level at all. Am I getting sleepy? Yeah, my stamina is still pretty high. When deep in combat, you can dodge incoming enemy attacks with your evade ability. Yep, been doing that already. That's how I got past them before. The kit. Well, let's not go this way then. The fact that we're getting tooltips over there makes me think that we're supposed to go that way. Let's take a quick inventory of over here. Well, there's a bunch of stuff in there. I suppose I can crouch jump through this very obvious hole. Sardines. Dr. Thomas, I am not sure if this medication is proving to be effective. The symptoms are not going away. The brain shivers alone are becoming unbearable. Please, can I be, be prescribed something else? Would it be so bad if I went off this medication and stuck with therapy instead? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. A anytime you start describing something as brain shivers, I feel like there's probably something worse than just, like, panic attacks going on. Doctor, I can feel the flesh of my cerebrum actually shifting beneath my skin. I'm a little worried. That's fine, just take some Prozac. Uh, I feel like if I don't go in here, I'm gonna miss a secret, but if I do go in here, I'm gonna get stuck. Let's make sure that there's no flashlight key that I can just use and it forgot to tell me about. 
There is no flashlight key whatsoever. Uh, I guess I do have a flare. Let's stop bitching and moaning about a flashlight and just use one of these flares. Because flares are one of those things I never use in games. I always get them and I'm like, hmm, better save them. Because they're limited. I mean, it is still limited. It's only got 30 seconds before it runs out. And I definitely don't want to be in there when it runs out. Hey, look, we got into the loot room. Now we can get all this rotten meat. Yeah, there's another game I'm trying to think of where you also just go around scarfing down, like, rotting food all the time. But I cannot remember what it is. Permanently increases the max threshold of stamina. That seems pretty good. Use that. Canned meat? Also causes radiation damage for some reason. It even says it's protected from the toxic environment. But maybe it's because I... I have to cook it? So that's an energy drink. Yeah, I guess I don't have anything that doesn't cause, like, radiation damage unless I eat these apples. Eat two of those. Gives me a little bit of a stamina buff. Not that I really need one. Oh god, now we have to run all the way back, don't we? You couldn't have given me, like, a shortcut out of here. Like, you kind of thought that's why there was a door here. You know, locked from the inside kind of thing. Wait. Is there a button? No. Alright, now I gotta stumble my way back. <laughs> okay. You're gonna lock me in here with enemies that I can't even squeeze past? I'm sorry. What the fuck is that? Oh, he spit on me. Ugh. That's my punishment for going to the loot room. They send the tentacle man after me. Great. Well, I don't think he can get me because I had to crouch. But, uh... Oh, did I put away my flare? I thought it ran out. Maybe I put it away because I tried to use items. Wow, this health kit doesn't heal you for very much. So yeah, that was a bit of a, <laughs> a shitty trap. But a reminder that even exploration can be dangerous on Ford Oasis. In Fort Oasis? I don't know. It's How do you refer to an island that is also just called Fort? Okay, we got Tackle Ghost. So you don't want to be in a straight line with this guy, I guess. There is a lot of being defenseless at the moment. Okay, we got the Underhaul's key. I like that the game tells you specifically that it's an important key. Kind of grabbing everything I can before we leave. I think that's all that's here. Oh, fuck. Okay. I, I guess I'm just gonna have to run away and then run past him. Great. I stopped long enough to use a med kit, which required me to stand still and take as much damage as I healed. So this game's not easy. 
And again, there was no, no difficulty selection at the start. Okay. I just realized I also have way more bleed than I do bandages. So I think I'm just dead now. Because I don't have anything else that can stop bleeding. And this just causes more bleeding, but it heals me too. <laughs> I mean, bleeding seems like it runs out, so maybe I can juggle these, but man, that kind of sucks for, like, the first or second type of enemy you encounter. To be trapped in the straightaway with them. And like I said, we're still on the first level, even though there are six levels, so these levels are pretty long. What did I just pick up? Scissors. It is a weapon. Does not deal a lot of damage. One-handed attack only. Not very durable. Didn't it say the pickaxe was very durable and it broke in like five hits? So I expect this to explode in my hands instantly. Am I still bleeding? No. Okay, the bleeding ran out. I'm not doing great, though. Hmm. I wonder... Um, Let's see, I wonder if this will just drop There's me. There's no use in dispatching them. You might as well leave them there to... ...fester. Well, you say that, but, I mean, if it comes between me and the... ...the way forward, I kinda have to dispatch him. You can combine items. It's gonna be used to repair broken weapons as well. Okay, so I think we... ...have our tutorial here for combining. Kind of a weird place to find just a random painting. Also, still not worried about all these, like, husk corpses all over the place. Okay, so I think we got a hammer. Or the pieces of a hammer. Now, do we want to make a pickaxe, or do we want to make a hammer? They don't have any stat comparisons when they're broken. I feel like a pickaxe would probably be more useful. We also picked up a pipe. So we have a few weapons now. Also nice that it tells you what you have combined before you actually confirm it. If you just want to test out, like, what does this make? Flare. T. Glad you were able to return the contract to us. How would you like to start next week? We have a lot of backed up work we need to get on top of. Last year was hectic, but 86 is looking to be worse. Glad to have you on board. Okay, that must be before he fucked up. this way. I was like, oh, never mind. I can go this way. Now, again, they said no point in dispatching him. I'm guessing that means we should try to just get around this guy, but man, there is not a lot of room to do that in these hallways. Pretty tight spaces so far. Thankfully, they're not the smartest. Okay, well, for some reason he doesn't want to walk on that grate, so I'm just going to use that as my opportunity. Oh, that doesn't open. Tired, it says at the top right. Chapter 2. Okay, well, that was the end of the first level, so I guess it's not that long. So we're probably not going to go too much further. I don't know, I might actually return to this game. It seems like it would be worth doing a full playthrough of. And I know there is more than one ending, and the other one, the like, true ending, requires you to do some stuff. I just saw that mentioned in a comment as well. So we can throw stuff with F. We got a whole lot of rocks here. I don't know if our weight capacity down here affects our stamina. It seems like we can carry a lot of shit. You know, 180 pounds. 
So where is the throwing slot? Oh, throwable. And we do have these quick slots that I could be using for, like, healing items. I guess I should have done that. What I really need right now, though, is a healing item. Bricks. That's where I just came from. Can't go there. It's weird how the doors that you can't open, you can't even get close to. They're like... <laughs> they have a uh, bounding box way ahead of them. I think this is where we need to use our rock. Rock throwing puzzles confirm. Jared H. Miller needs key. Oh, there's a shotgun in there. Are you Jared H. Miller? Do I need to kill you for your key? He's dead. And I'm bleeding. And I still don't have more bandages. Oh, no, wait. Yes, I do. So I wonder, should I use a bandage here, or should I just let that bleed tick down? Because it seems like it only goes up by one little thing. So you, you still heal more than you actually lose. What did I just pick up? Rag. Mix with alcohol to make bandages. And we picked up some dirty water. The water has been potentially spoiled by radiation. And then we can throw the bottle. So yeah, there's a, a lot of systems in place here. It seems a little rough, like, difficulty-wise, but... Polished in terms of how it actually plays. Oh, look, we got a real map. And this area is giant. I guess this is where we are right here, and this is where we came from. See, so yeah, I can bring that up with the journal. There's no separate map key. What's going on here? It's not like a green flash. It does not open from this side. Unfortunately, the map does not really tell you where you are on it. You have to kind of just infer from where you are. See what I picked up. Is that army rations. Large package of dry food. Enough food to feed three people. But I'm gonna eat it all at once. I'm gonna use a med kit to top up my health. And that's the switch we threw a rock at. Okay, we didn't have to do that. That was literally just to get those items and teach you that you could throw rocks at switches. Safe? Question mark? So this must be the church. There's a door to upper church, but I think that's the one over there. This area is not mapped, though. Which I think is right here. I don't know, the map seems like there are more doors than there actually is. And if I look around, like this seems like this is the to the surface. And then we come into here, which means we are here, theoretically. And that means, oh, well, I mean, this is Miller storage. Sorry, I'm just trying to, like, get my bearings on the map. That's Miller's storage, which means it's to the right of this. This leads to the upper church here. But that's where we came in. Oh, 
Okay, yeah, so this door over here is not marked on the map. Or, I mean, it's not marked what's beyond that. I'm gonna guess that not all locked doors can be open. Surface access. You end our progress. The forgotten ones. They do not belong in this place. Near the graveyard, there is a storage room. It should be a key to bypass this door. I'm pretty sure I saw the ground disappear here, so I thought it was like there would just be nothing hidden underneath these bushes. Okay. Can barely tell what I'm looking at here, but there is a coffee stain circle down here. And a phone number. God damn it. Well, now we're finding plenty of weapons. Now, is that another upgrade? Iodine tablets. Nope, and it's just anti-rads. Hopefully this is not one of those games that gives you a bad ending specifically for fighting enemies that are trying to kill you. And that avoiding combat is more of a choice for just, I don't want to get hit. Hey, drop some alcohol. And I didn't get hit. Uh, okay, I pressed 2, thinking it would switch to item number 2, and instead it gave me a hunger buff, which means I ate one of my items. I tried to do a charge-up attack there, and instead I wasted a bunch of my stamina and didn't actually swing. And apparently I'm hungry now. Oh, you know what? I did... I mixed up where I put the items. I forgot that I accidentally put the pipe on one, so I actually did use number two. Excuse me, you can't throw rocks too. Okay, so for the, the heavy swing, you have to hold right trigger, or sorry, right mouse, and then left mouse. Letting go of right mouse doesn't just make you throw the thing. I need to heal. I only have a, a solution for that. Yeah, rock death. <laughs> So yeah, one hit with that looks like it took off about, what, like two-tenths of the meter? Or one-fifth? I'm still bleeding. A lot. <laughs> So, if I combine this with a rag, I get, what, one bandage? That seems like... Oh, no, I got five. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna say, that seems like a lot of materials for one bandage, considering how little healing, or how little bleeding that actually cures. And I'm pretty sure there's not enough safe items that we can just eat healthy stuff. Eat some sandwiches to stop getting hungry, then eat some iodine tablets that make you hungry to get rid of the radiation the sandwiches gave you. Alright, I think we're gonna figure out where we're going here and then we'll wrap up there because I really don't know how much is left of this overall. Like, obviously, there's still probably a decent chunk. I'm just saying, like, I don't want to play, like, a third of the game in one video. <laughs> Especially if I'm going to come back to it, which I would like to. This seems worth coming back to, even if it's going to be a little 
A little painful. I wonder why the iodine tablets, like, glow orange. I don't know, they stand out more than the other items. Useless. I like that that one's not graffiti, it's actually, like, lettered onto the wall. Somebody took some time to put that there. One of them is making an especially crunchy sound. Oh, come on. I can't just jump over these. Cool. Wow, I really beat the shit out of that guy. <laughs> Not gonna be able to do that a second time. Gone! Now, where does this put us back? Because there haven't been any save points or anything, it's just been auto-saving. And it looks like it's when we first got here. Can I quick save? I haven't actually tested that. Okay, yeah, you can just quick save. So I should have been doing that. That's on me. Yeah, this seems cool. I'm surprised that we don't get any sort of gun early on. I figured we would get a gun and then it would, like, you know, break. <laughs> But we haven't even gotten that. We have gotten some melee weapons that are effective, but we cannot take hits. So you really have to be more careful about just get a swing in, then dodge, get a swing in, then dodge. Eat some sandwiches to get your stamina back. But yeah, that's, uh, I think that's a look at Total Chaos, just so we don't have to do the same stuff again. It's a shame I couldn't get, at least get a hold of the shotgun before wrapping up, but... We'll just have to save that for the actual playthrough, whenever that comes around. I'm kind of racking up a decent list of... Doom mods that I want to do full playthroughs of at some point. This seems like a very small pipe. I do kind of wish that you didn't rack up bleed so quickly, considering how little the bandages actually heal you. Like, I feel if the bandages were more than, like, one bar of bleed stopping, that would be less of a problem. But as it is, it's like, well, you get hit two times and you're probably just dead. Because even though you survive the two hits, you will bleed out. So, a lot like the start of playing Stalker Anomaly, where, you know, any hit from a mutant will give you more bleeding than you're ever able to handle. <laughs> which stops being a problem later in the game. So yeah, thank you for joining me for this look at Total Chaos. Again, this is, you know, totally free and more or less standalone. You don't even need Doom anymore to run it. It comes with the appropriate files that you need, which is like a free Doom or something like that. But yeah, I think this is pretty cool. It's nice to see another Doom mod that is more survival horror than just fast-paced, you know, Boomer Shooter, Throwback Shooter. I hate Boomer Shooter. It's such a dumb term. Since it kind of... It's an era that for most Boomers, you know, came after them, so they didn't play them. They will attempt to end our progress. The Forgotten Ones. They do not belong in this place. Near the graveyard, there is a storage room. It should be a key bypass this door. So thank you for joining me for my look at Total Chaos, and maybe we'll be seeing more Total Chaos in the near future. But until then, you folks all take care. I've got more Doom mods to cover. <laughs> so look out for those.